This recipe is truly dear to my heart. It's my grandmother's apple pie recipe. Well, not exactly, but it's a rift on her apple pie recipe. I was quite lucky. My grandma and granddad lived with us for like most of my childhood. And this is one of the things she used to do all the time. They never ever looked the same, but they always tasted fantastic. Um, a little bit different. We're not gonna use a pie dish. We're gonna do it free form on a flat tray, which is really easy. So the first thing we need to do is start preparing our apples. So I've got a kilo and a half of whole apples that I've peeled, cored and cut into eighths. So I've just got that in water with a little bit of lemon juice to keep it from oxidising. So we're going to transfer the apples from the water into the pan. Now, lemon juice, our sugar over the apples. You don't want it too sweet. You want sort of a, like a balance of tartness and sweetness. Just quickly give them a stir so all those sort of flavours have melted together. Now I don't have a lid for this pan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little cartouche using baking paper. We'll take two strips, scrunch them up, wet them like so. Okay, so we've got some wet paper and we're just going to basically tuck that over the top. What that does is basically traps in a little bit of steam like a lid but allows some to come out. The paper is nice and moist so it's hopefully not going to catch fire if it's hanging over and we're going to steam and sort of slowly braise our apples until they're just tender. The next job is to go to the pastry. Now I think the pastry is what makes an apple pie. Yeah, the apple pie filling is important. You've got to have good balance of flavours, but the pastry is the key. You want something that's going to be nice and short, but still have enough texture that it doesn't fall apart. Um, and this really does remind me, this is what makes it my grandmother's apple pie. We're going to start with some flour, about three cups. We've got some icing sugar. And finally, this is the little grandma secret, a bit of custard powder. Now custard powder adds a wonderful colour to it, but also a shortness, a little bit like adding corn flour, but with a little bit of extra flavour. Now we're going to incorporate two different types of fat. Here, the lard. So this is really old school. When my grandmother was cooking during the war, a young lady cooking for her husband, Butter would have been pretty hard to come by, so lard was used a lot in pastry. And I've got some butter, so equal, equal amounts of butter and lard. So we're going to put those in, and this is what reminds me of my grandmother. She used to do everything by hand, and she had this funny thumb that was always shaped like that. And so she'd be doing a pastry, and I'd look at her, and her thumb looked really weird. <laughs> it's one of those images that always stuck in my mind. So. This is, you can do it by machine if you're a little bit lazy. And, and believe me, when you get halfway through this, your arms are killing you from rubbing the butter in. You really want to use a machine, but you're committed, so you can't. You can start to see that it's forming this sort of like coarse breadcrumb. Now, what we need to do is just free our hands up like so. Now in here, I have four egg yolks, but I only need three for the pastry. The other I'm going to keep for glazing, for basting the, uh, the tart. So if I can get them all out, or well, not all of them, but three of them, now it's going to get a little bit messy. Loosely fold all of the egg together with the pastry, bring it together like so. It's really going to start to clump together, which is great. Typical, I need to check my apples, but my hands are covered in pastry. We'll check our apples. Okay, we'll take this little cartouche off. Okay. So they are just tender now. I'm going to take those off and just let them cool down. And what I need to do now is just divide it into two portions. One's going to form the top and one is going to form the bottom. Oh, 
Okay, so we can let those rest, pop them into the fridge, and then about half an hour later, we can start making our apple pie. Let's go to a break. Our pastry's had about half an hour in the fridge to rest. It's got a little bit firmer, but it's still soft. If you leave it in there for too long, you'll have to let it sort of warm up again and uh, be ready to roll. So to do the rolling, obviously we need a rolling pin. Now my grandma used to do it on the, on the board, throw loads of flour down, and she was pretty good at rolling. But I find this so much easier. I'm gonna take one piece like so. And we put that in the middle of our paper. We take another sheet. And using the parchment paper, it just as allows us not to throw extra flour onto the, the pastry, changing the texture of it, making it a little bit sort of flintier or harder. And now we're just going to gently roll it out. And see how, instead of changing direction with the rolling pin, I just spin the paper to create a nice circle. Don't go too fast, because what you'll do, you'll, you'll end up with big cracks around the uh, edge of the apple pie. Once we've reached the de desired uh, thickness, we're just gonna slide it onto a tray. We'll fill our pie, and then, similar process, roll the, uh, the top out. So I've done some very sexy rolling, and then what I did is I marked out my apple pie with an outer ring of apple, and gradually built the bottom layer, and then piled everything up in the middle to make a kind of a dome, okay? And now I've got my top, and see the beauty of using the parchment paper is you just pick it up like this, line it up, and slide it over the top. Use your fingers, to push it down. Okay, so we take off the first little layer, like so. And this is the tricky one. Ever so gently. Peel back the pastry. Wonderful. So we're just gonna use the sides of our hands, like this, just to push down the edges. Okay, pat it down. I'll trim off the edges like so. So get yourself a nice, kind of roundish apple pie. This is what I mean, when my grandma made them, they were all kinds of different shapes. They weren't always round. And when they cook, they kind of like to lean out a little one way or the other. And quite often you'd end up with like a football shaped apple pie. But it's not what it looks like, it's what it tastes like. Okay, then I use my thumb and forefinger I'm just going to go around the edge of the pie, crimp it down, like so. So now we just need to get a little bit bang go on this, some brush strokes. Okay, using that leftover egg yolk, just over the top of the pie. We'll pop that in the fridge for about half an hour, just to rest up a bit. And then into an oven at 160 degrees, It'll take maybe 45 minutes. Set your timer for 30 minutes and then check it every five minutes until you're happy that you've got a good apple pie. Mmm, there's nothing better than the smell of freshly baked pastry. The uh, apple pie was in the oven for about 45 minutes at 160 degrees. Lovely golden colour. Now you need to let it cool down. The pastry is really short. By short I mean like delicate, crumbly. So when it's hot, it's very fragile. The apple pie actually slid on the tray and it squared itself off on one side. But no matter, it's going to taste absolutely brilliant. So just quickly cut into it. So you pretty much have to leave it on the tray until it's completely cool. But I'm gonna push the boundary here and try and take a slice off while it's still warm. Oh, and I think we've done it. Oh my word. 
onto the plate. Now, what do you like with your apple pie? Well, I'm a custard man. Some people are ice cream. Some people are purists and just have pouring cream. But I'm gonna sort of cut to the middle ground and I'm gonna serve it with ice cream today. Thanks, Grandma. That's your apple pie. I hope you're watching down and proud. Thank you. Apple pie.